What is happening guys? Welcome back to Ashen, and I have finished my analysis of weapons. So I found a list of all the weapons on the Ashen subreddit, uh, punched in a critical equation both looking at crit damage as if it's 125% of normal damage and if it's 150% normal damage, and then I based all my values around that and I've come to a couple conclusions. Uh, so for the two-hander, we're going to be sticking with the cleaving axe here. Now, for raw damage, the runic axe is actually better very, very slightly. Uh, and it's such such a small comparison that just, just to give you guys the numbers here, uh, going with the, the runic axe, I'm looking at roughly uh, 117 on a light hit or 134 on a heavy hit in terms of a true heavy. Whereas with the cleaving, I was 117 on light and 127 with a heavy. So very, very minimal difference. Uh, if you're only working with a value of 1.25 as opposed to 1.5 for crits, uh, you're looking at 111 on the cleaving axe compared to 113 on the runic and 120 on a heavy attack versus 130 on the runic. But despite that, watch the runic axe in action and then watch the cleaving axe in action. They have identical movesets, identical attack speed, but notice how, how, notice how short this feels, you know? Now, by comparison, the cleaving axe Look at this. Even just chopping into ground. So, just based on, on testing it, I feel that the Cleaving Axe has a much bigger range on its attacks. Um, and for comparable damage, I think that's going to be my go-to. Anyway, on to the one-handed weapons. Now, this wasn't as clear-cut. Um, Stun-based weapons actually seem to be the superior choice here when it comes to one-handed weapons, and in terms of the highest R1 spammy damage, it's actually going to be this bad boy, the Prophetic Basher. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then enough stamina to do one dodge. Now, the true damage looking at something like that, I uh, was looking at roughly 69 per one-handed swing on that once it is at, and this is all based on weapons that are just listed at repaired. We're not going all the way up on tiers. Um, but by comparison with the five swings, if we go for something like the curved hatchet, by comparison, which uh, in terms of damage, we would be looking at closer to 61 compared to the 69. But one, two, three, four, five, six, and we still have enough stamina to dodge. So it's a lot trickier in terms of what your better one-hander is going to be because you're seeing a pretty big stamina difference. Um, the stun lock potential on the one-hander certainly make them sound very desirable, but at the same time, you know, the ability to get out that extra attack, that's just that much more DPS. So it's kind of hard to say here what's really going to be better. Um, in terms of what I'm going to use for the one-hander, there's one that I don't have access to yet called the Ironwork Hatchet, which is basically identical to the Curved Hatchet, but just a little bit better. Um, you know, damage goes up a little bit higher, so I'm going to keep my eye out for that. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm just going to stick with the, the uh, Double Hatchet that I've been running with up until now. So I'll put the Double-Sided Axe on. I wish the Double-Sided Axe, damage-wise, it didn't really stack up, but does get out a lot of attacks. So, anyway. Uh, we'll be upgrading our two-hander for the time being. Let's interact with this. Move some, some stuff back. All these weapons that we clearly are not going to need. Um, another interesting one, which I just put back in the box, but the... Uh, where did it go? The Barbaric Axe actually had the potential for higher damage on the heavy attacks, but it's much, much slower. Uh, I don't think I really need to, to bother showing that, but, you know, when I say it's slower, I mean, like, this thing, it, it just... Zhu, zhu, just real long, heavy, heavy tosses. Uh, the listener poleaxe couldn't stack up on damage, unfortunately. It just didn't quite hit the marks it needed. So, if you want to go for raw DPS, the runic one, which we got off that last boss, is going to be your go-to. Um, strongest heavy attacks in the game, I believe, were on the barbaric axe. Values... No, oh, actually, the pickaxe. Oh, yeah, the pickaxe. The pickaxe has the strongest two-handed heavy attack in the game. But it sucks in, like, every other aspect, basically, so don't use that. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we're going to be going with the, the big old executioner-style blade. That's our run, too. Um, you guys can find the full list on the subreddit, and then if you really want, you know, you can, of course, uh, punch in equations yourself to figure out the numbers. And I need 
We're already 500. That won't take long to get. I'm going to need 9,000 to hit Ash Infused. So we'll just go in with our, uh, our double sided for now. We'll continue our journey. But we're going to be focusing on upgrading that bad boy. So anyway, let's get things underway now that I'm done battling about weapons. Uh, we're going to head back on out to the Whispers. And we're going to try and close out Jokul's journey. Sounds funny saying Jokul's journey. But yeah, for those that want to find the thing, um, just because I'm lazy, if you just go to the Ashen subreddit, there's a little thread just called Best Two-Handed Weapons, Stun versus Crit, and uh, one of the first comments in there is a Excel spreadsheet table that has everything listed on out. So that's where I ended up pulling all of my data from for anybody else that's interested to take a look. But let's uh, continue on our path here. We've got Joker with it. Little spoopy with all the red stuff. Spears. I still need to find the, uh, the hatchet. Really want it. Find that hatchet. Just because one handed seem infinitely better than two handed from the fact that you get both. Uh, you're just so much faster on your attack that it makes it kind of non comparable. Um, and that. And, other things here, and how do we get? Oh, how to do this, Jokel? How the hell do we get over there? Yep. I think Jokel just died. I'm pretty sure Jokel just fell into the water. I think that's what that noise was. Sapien moss. This is the stuff I need to upgrade the weapons. Which I also discovered weapons have multiple tiers. Like they go they go way past ash. You go like ash infused and then it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up. Um I think it's up to plus seven is where stuff peaks out, so you can take weapons up into crazy high levels with the right amount of upgrades. And you know what? I was talking about how there's probably some like leaping, bounding type mechanic and I'm even more convinced now because I see no way past this without Know, destroying rocks or being able to leap up. It's like we're not going to be doing Jokel's thing. Um, instead, I could explore this area a little bit here, or I could continue on with side quests. Let me. Ow! Rude ass! Meanwhile, I do want. Oh, there's a couple things I want to get. I'm not really. I'm not struggling for damage right now, so it's not like I, I'm in a desperate spot where I absolutely need to upgrade. Like, I'm still one-shotting most of the enemies I run into. Got spears for days. My spears one-shot enemies when thrown. Let's get Jokel back. I suppose we can go on and continue with the... Uh, that we had going on. Stay here, but instead of doing blood ties, we will. Elia and then uh, Batarans right before her. So let's do Batarans first. Um, it looks look, best way here, going around the lake maybe. No, let's just kind of head that direction and take things as they come. Out of my way, light doggies. Oh, whoa, it's up there. I think it's huge. Oh, okay. That's, that's fine, I guess. Find a way. Actually, you know what? It looks like I might have to go from before I jumped down here. At the map here, you know. Where I crossed over. Well, I don't know. I don't. Actually, because the other the other option here is it looks like maybe I could go this way, and then on the other side of that, circle back up. Let's try that. God, this thing is huge. Crazy to think that's what the thing resting um, turns into eventually. Can I help you. 
Out of my way, scrubs. So close, climb on the reeds. Oh, oh, oh my god, that was so freaking close. Many people, as we got living by the water, you figure would know how to fucking swim. I wonder if it's like a hook shot type mechanic where I can like, target these red things and like teleport to them or something. Oh, I just remembered I didn't look to see what new upgrades I could put on despite unlocking a couple. Ouch. You got there, bro. Stun resist, 15 resist, minus 10 regeneration, 25 on costs. Oh, so I get more stun resist, 15, 25, 10. 15, 10. So, do I want 10% more stamina cost in exchange for 10 stun resist? Let's see the fashion of it. Ooh, no, that is disgusting. gonna have to be a no from me. Got it, we get something to solve this area, I believe. Just the climb, I saw the prompt for it. way instead. Oh, yep, here we go. Ladder. This seems like the easier route. Definitely something that lets you go to those. Why else is there treasure just sitting there? Buy it. Like a power we get or something. We got a suicider coming for him.
Where you going, Jogel? Aki's lure artifact added. Lure artifact. Is this Elia's? Oh. Granny's over there. Baderons. We're making our way towards Baderon. We just came way out to the docks. We did get some fire kelp, though. Looks like I can get, not on this part of the platform, but a different part of it, and uh, up there, and then I take that across here, maybe? Promising. So another one thing that's worth consideration is that when you have high stun weapons, you're more likely to shatter the shields. Like a high stun weapon has a good chance of just breaking that shield outright. Whereas without the high stun, I'll probably... Ooh. Uh, without that, I'll probably have to... Um, a charge attack, basically. Oh my god. This would be... That would be the saddest spot to drown. Oh my god. No. No. Thought I saw. Oh, there is no loot there. Okay, thought I saw loot there, but nope. Basically the area I just came from, but I just want to see how this all uh, ties in. Crit also scales a lot better with the two-handed weapons, just because when you know your damage is that much higher, you know, correspondingly, the damage of a critical attack is also that much higher. So I think I might be better off getting a, a one-handed bludgeon-style weapon just to break through shields, and on top of that, have the like perma stun lock when I'm R1 spamming, and then uh, go for the the. The, the raw damage in a two-hander. But I don't know what I want. I have to look. I mean I have I have the prophetic basher, so let me real fast just to just to look at my list here. Don't don't fall into water. Where's my and it's not, no, can't, can't, can't click out of the game here. 
Um, Prophetic Basher was 69 damage as a one-hander. There was another one that was really good. The Spiked Cudgel wasn't too bad. It was at 66. Because the big thing with the Prophetic Basher is the two-handed attack, uh, or the heavy attack sucks dick. The heavy attack is only 76 damage, but the one-hand is 69. By comparison, the Cudgel is 66 on one hand, but 88 on the heavy. It's kind of like, well, you know, how, how often am I actually going to be doing the, uh, the heavy attacks with the one hand? I feel like I mostly do the R1s, just because the R2, you know, it's a little bit slow, a little bit of a build-up. Usually it doesn't really feel like it, it has the payoff. Oh boy. Lots of suicides. That was, that was, that was pleasant. Very pleasant. Ow! Oh god, I thought you were... Stop this. Go oh, cool. you wanna maybe hit this guy in the back? Thank you, my friend. I mean, the hug oh, up at the same time. Like, I think the one thing that's stopping me from just going all in on the basher is seeing the repeated critical hits. And given, you know, it's it's very much a not guaranteed thing, but seeing, like, like boss fights where I start swinging and it's like, crit, crit, crit. I'm like, oh, oh, so many crits simultaneously. So good. Front ammo ran. I wonder if this is going to be a boss fight. Kind of feels like we're, we're heading into a boss fight right now. And the other consideration is, as I mentioned uh, earlier, where I was like, you know, with the with the blunt, I'm getting five attacks. Just with the axe, I'm getting six attacks. I mean, how often are you really going to get out all six attacks before you dodge, you know? Usually not that much. Er. Right. See the matrix. What, did that, did that heal anything? Oh my god, I didn't realize how high my health is. Those are <laughs> barely worth using anymore. Matriarch lady. Oh, forgotten axe. I'll have to... That looks cool. For, no, forgone axe. 30 critical hit chance. What? I don't even see that in my list. I'm curious, with 30 critical hit, that thing would probably rank pretty high. She has just been letting some undesirables move in. And like you can smell the boss fight coming up. Uh oh yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. A bunch of zap. Uh, I wonder why it's letting us refill our gourd. All right, well, <clears throat> since it looks like we're about to get into a fight, I'm going to actually wrap this one up here. We will tackle Amiren in the next episode, so make sure to stay tuned, and I will catch you guys then with more action.